What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and today we're going to be talking about the preload and file size for the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, some new marketing plus even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before you jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also as a reminder, we got plenty of brand new content going up over on Detonated.com, expanding on all the coverage you're seeing here on the channel just in the form of articles on the website and plenty of tweets every single hour of course on Detonated's Twitter. I posted a previous video talking about the Modern Warfare 3 campaign in which we went over a full list of all upcoming missions that'll be inside of MW3. There'll be nine traditional ones and five open combat ones really excited about that i have another video coming out tomorrow morning talking a little bit more about multiplayer and some other spicy updates that will make you even more excited for the post-launch season of modern warfare 3 now as of a couple days ago they went ahead and premiered a brand new live action trailer for modern warfare 3 known as the lobby i believe the same director of john wick did go ahead and direct this film it's a short two minute video but it's awesome kind of going back to the whole tagline of there's a soldier in all of us haven't seen that tagline used in quite a while for call of duty but with that inside of the live action trailer we have a lot of the actors that play various call of duty characters reprising their roles in this film it was crazy to see i mean we got to see task force one for one for the most part i know gaz and ghost were there alejandro made a little cameo we also have the actors that play graves and valeria respectively also popping in and it has me wondering right what roles will those characters play because their fate at the end of mw2's post launch season is kind of just up in the air and they could definitely play a major role inside of the mw3 campaign that I'm really looking forward to. Now, apart from the celebrity appearances that also happened inside of the lobby, it was cool to know that that was the same lobby that us content creators were at during the COD Next event. And on top of that too, the little short film does perfectly emphasize the Modern Warfare 2 carry forward feature in the sense that everything you have inside of the current Call of Duty will transfer into the next one. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about the new 21 Savage song, which premiered inside of this lobby short film. We'll talk more about that in tomorrow's video. But with that being said, something I emphasized a little bit in a previous video and over in a detonated tweet is that on some of the new haunting themed blueprints it mentions something called captain price's revenge an in-game event of some sort within almazra city on october 31st coincidentally that is just around the time when the haunting event is meant to end inside of modern warfare 2 and warzone that same week at least so i'm wondering if there's a campaign related live event or some type of marketing or a trailer or something narrative wise that's meant to happen inside of almazra right before modern warfare 3 comes out and the fact that it's called captain price's revenge also has me wondering if it'll be something that kind of bridges the gap between the end of the Modern Warfare 2 post-launch story with the beginning of Modern Warfare 3's campaign. I mean, it's still unclear who the prisoner is in the very first campaign mission of MW3. Obviously, we're looking for Prisoner 627, and in the original Modern Warfare 2 2009, Captain Price was 627. So will something happen to Price in some type of mini live event by the end of this game's life cycle that helps set up the MW3 campaign? Just throwing that out there, but it could also mean nothing, but maybe do something special for Halloween inside of Warzone zone to also close off the Halloween event this year. Who knows? Now, also an interesting report that I saw pop in a couple of days ago is the fact that characters like Nolan, who we saw during the Shadow Siege event, and we also get a glimpse of in the PC launch trailer for MW3, characters like Laswell, Nikolai, and even Shepard are reportedly going to be reprising their roles inside of MW3, and we know about some of these that are for sure going to make a cameo appearance, but apparently Laswell is going to be a playable operator, so I wonder if that's a bit of a spoiler that she survives the events of the campaign, or maybe that doesn't matter at all, because the fact we have Carrie forward from Modern Warfare 2 just means that we get all our operators from the previous Call of Duty doesn't necessarily mean that they can't die in the Modern Warfare 3 campaign but Laswell's never been a playable operator before so that'll be interesting to see what her role is in this new COD installment. Now Nikolai didn't have that much of a presence in Modern Warfare 2 he played a slightly larger role in Modern Warfare 19 but Shepard's someone I'm really looking forward to we got to hear his voice in the Shadow Siege event so without a doubt we're gonna have a really interesting plot to look into when it comes to Shadow Company with such hammer's new title. Now I think one of the plots I'm looking forward to the most is the fact that Shadow company has been infiltrated by Coney, Nolan being one of those operators that has been undercover. That's going to be a really cool plot point that probably helps us witness the fall of Shadow Company, and I wonder what fate that leaves for people like Shepard and Graves, who are kind of off the grid right now, but again, made a reappearance with the Shadow Siege events back during Season 5. But with all that aside, here's how you can go ahead and play Modern Warfare 3 Campaign Early Access. So as you saw in the thumbnail of this video, and as I talked about a bit in a detonated article yesterday, the actual campaign tab inside of COD HQ has popped up for digital pre-orders on PlayStation. This tab has not popped up for Xbox or PC just yet, but following the release of the mid-season 6 updates, people were beginning to see this tab pop up in their COD HQ menu, and you guys are probably aware about the little splash screen that comes up whenever you click on a certain game mode, whether it's MW2, Warzone, or DMZ. We'll have a similar splash screen pop up for Modern Warfare 3 once that game does become available. I saw some criticism with the Modern Warfare 3 MP beta where you have to boot up the COD HQ app, then click on the beta, and which then restarts the entire application to 
to put you into multiplayer. That's probably not going to be how Kata HQ works once MW3 does fully release. I think that was something that was just exclusive to the beta for whatever reason. But once the entirety of the game with all of its data packs do release, it'll probably be a smooth transition from every game mode of Modern Warfare 3. But it will probably restart the application to switch between Modern Warfare 2 and 3 if you do choose to keep all those games installed. And think of the fact that right now, if you boot up Modern Warfare 2, you click on multiplayer, Warzone DMZ, you have a seamless transition between all of those. But if you click on campaign, it will restart your application to boot up those missions. So like I said, that's probably just something that was for the MW3 beta. But when the full game drops, we'll have that seamless transition again between all of our game modes. Now, as a reminder, campaign early access is only available to digital pre-orders of Modern Warfare 3. No physical copies. We'll talk more about physical in a second. But in terms of when the preload should pop up for campaign early access, if they're going to do a preload again this year, like they did last year with Modern Warfare 2, I'm sure they will, that should be popping up probably around Halloween or November the 1st, about a day or two before early access does begin, which is November 2nd at around 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 o'clock Central, 1 o'clock Eastern. If they change those times, I'll update the article on Detonated and put a new pinned comment down below in this video. But last year, campaign access did begin on October 20th, whereas the preload for campaign access did drop for all platforms on around, I think it was midday to the evening on October the 19th. Now, something I want to go over that I've touched on before is the fact that it's frustrating that if you guys out there want to get a steelbook copy of MW3 at GameStop, it's a limited edition there, or if you guys just want to have a physical disc for the game, that's fine, but you're almost incentivized not to do that since you won't get a lot of the pre-order bonuses, including campaign early access. So if you're someone out there like me who does like having a physical copy of their games, you're almost forced to get two copies of the game if you want to keep up with that tradition of having an uh, actual game case on your shelf. You have to get a digital edition to get uh, all the rewards, to reap all the benefits, and then you have to buy another copy of the game that you get from the store or something. That's just frustrating, and I think that just emphasizes that we're not going to ever go back to seeing collector's editions of Call of Duties anymore. Modern Warfare 19 was the last game to do it. Black Ops Cold War was supposed to get one, but that got canceled for whatever reason. And I think with the industry pushing more towards digital sales now, it's very unlikely we get collector's editions again for Call of Duty, even though I'm aware other games out there like Spider-Man, for example, still come out with collector's editions here and there. But for a series like Call of Duty, it's probably not going to happen again anytime soon. But I get it. It's kind of confusing how if you go get a physical copy of a new Call of Duty, they'll print a code on your receipt for you to go ahead and download the beta, but they can't do that for campaign. I know that's unfortunate and maybe one day they'll figure that out, but maybe it's just something a little too complicated to where they're like, you know what? We can't figure out how to get a voucher code on people's receipts for them to get the campaign pack for early access, but we can still get them the beta. Maybe that's something that is going on behind the scenes. Maybe in the future they could change things like that. I would certainly hope so for, again, those out there that want to go ahead and get the Steelbook edition of the game over at their local GameStop. Now, in regards to the file size for the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, going off of how Modern Warfare 2 worked last year, the campaign pack for the last COD was around 36-ish gigabytes in size. Still a pretty decent file size, but not that big. Again, the campaign pack by itself does not include multiplayer or the co-op mode, so it'll probably be similar in size, but I wonder just how similar, because again, Modern Warfare 3 apparently has nine traditional missions and five open combat ones. I wonder if those open combat, open world type missions are gonna just be a little bit bigger in size compared to the traditional ones. In that case, will we see a download upwards of 40 to 45 gigs? Totally possible, or it could even be smaller than that. You never know. But the way Modern Warfare 2 campaign worked last year is that we got the preload for just the campaign pack about a day before early access began. Then a couple of days after early access for campaign kicked off, the preloads for the multiplayer and co-op packs did pop up in the game's database, and I believe for all platforms out there. So Modern Warfare 3 this year will probably end up seeing the preloads for the multiplayer and zombie packs, maybe on like November 5th or 6th, possibly even the 7th, a couple days before the full launch of the game on November the 10th. That's probably how it's going to work, and I know it gets confusing too, because with every major title update and new season of Call of Duty, you only ever see a preload, if at all, on PlayStation, never Xbox and PC. But when it comes to the full launch of the game, we typically do see preloads on every single platform, but the updates aren't installable. They're downloadable, but you can't install the pack until said content does officially release, which is helpful for those out there that want to just stay clear of spoilers that may pop up over on the internet, because that's what's going to happen, right? If these new packs do become installable prior to the content going live, there's going to be lots, and I mean lots of spoilers and leaked content going up over on Twitter, Reddit, even YouTube. Be very cautious of that if you guys out there want to go into Modern Warfare 3 spoiler free. But the last thing I'll end with is that with the launch of Modern Warfare 3, I believe you are going to see a big change to how the data packs do work for COD HQ. As of right now, inside of Modern Warfare 2, you can choose to just have multiplayer or Warzone installed. And if you have MW2 installed at all, that does help you for Modern Warfare 3 in the sense that you already have the 
5-ish gig Kari 2 application installed. So when you get Mono Warfare 3, it installs data packs to that app. If you don't have Mono Warfare 2 installed at all, then you have to also download a 25 gig COD HQ app on top of the base game of Modern Warfare 3. But for those out there that are like, wait, DK, do I have to have Modern Warfare 2 installed to play MW3? The answer is no. Once MW3 does come out, you obviously will have the option to uninstall the Modern Warfare 2 data packs from COD HQ. But for those that are like, oh, what about DMZ? That gets a little complicated because they haven't really talked about that just yet, but they will be closer to season one. There'll probably be an update where they separate Warzone and DMZ in terms of the data packs. So you can choose to have either BR or DMZ or both installed in COD HQ at a single moment's time. Because if Almazra is getting cycled off for Urzikstan, what does that mean for DMZ? We just haven't figured that out yet. But I was seeing reports that apparently on Xbox, you could already choose to have DMZ uninstalled from your COD HQ. I'm sure other platforms will get this feature closer to season one. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the preload and file size for the Modern Warfare 3 campaign? How are you feeling about the brand new marketing that we got? Plus everything else we discussed. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everybody. Thank you.